Okay, so another uh, example system that we can solve using the same technique is Newton's law of cooling, right? So we recall Newton's law of cooling was for an object, right? So this is our object with temperature H and it's sitting in a room, right? At temperature A. Okay, where this is maybe a function of time and A is constant, right? And this object doesn't generate or suck up enough heat to actually change the temperature of the room, but the temperature of the room is gonna change the temperature of the object, okay? And the object has a kind of cooling constant alpha that determines how fast or slow uh, it's affected by the temperature in the room. Okay, so Newton's law of cooling says that the change in temperature dh dt of this object is going to be proportional via this cooling constant to the temperature difference right so uh, we looked at this system using a phase line diagram right so we looked at this using the phase line right we said okay this is h versus dh dt and so wherever this uh, temperature a is is going to be kind of the equilibrium point so let's call that A, right? And then alpha is always positive, right? So here's like alpha times A. And so uh, the function looks like this. It's a straight line, alpha A minus H. Okay, this is supposed to be a straight line. So the equilibrium is always at this uh, room temperature, right? Which makes sense because once the object is the same temperature as the room, it's not gonna change temperature anymore, right? It's just gonna stay there. And the uh, phase line diagram says that when the temperature is less than the room temperature, you get a temperature increase. When the temperature is uh, greater than the room temperature, you're gonna get a decrease, right? If you're too hot, you're gonna cool down. If you're too cold, you're gonna heat up, right? So it's a stable equilibrium at H equals A. Okay, so we expect either decay or growth to room temperature. Okay, that's kind of what we expect from the solutions, but we don't really know uh, what those solutions gonna look like uh, just based on this diagram. Okay, so let's find an explicit formula for the temperature as a function of time, right? For H as a function of time using separation of variables, right? So we're gonna use separation of variables again, just like in the last video. Okay. It's also called separate and integrate. Um, so, okay, so we start with the differential equation, dh dt is equal to alpha a minus h. We want to get everything that has an h on it to the left-hand side, so we're gonna divide by this factor here. So we're gonna get one, over a minus h dh dt is equal to alpha. Then we're gonna integrate both sides with respect to time. Right, so this gives us integral of one over a minus h dh dt dt is equal to the integral of alpha dt. Okay, and then at this point, uh, this integral simplifies to one over a minus h dh, right? This one over here, uh, we'll just leave it as alpha dt for now. I mean, we could solve that at this point, but I want to do a manipulation here, right? A u substitution, because I know how to take the integral of one over h, but I don't really know how to take the integral of one over a minus h, so let's use a u substitution. So let's let u equals a minus h, and then du dh will be minus one, right? Derivative of that with respect to h is minus one. So then this integral becomes one over u. And then if I wanna get the du dh in there, I need to multiply and divide by minus one. So I get minus one over u du dh dh. Yeah, let's solve this one. Uh, alpha dt, alpha dt. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Okay, so then this is going to become minus natural log of u, right? The minus sign just comes out, it's just a constant. Um, plus, I guess, okay, I'll slow down. 
So this gives us minus integral of one over u du is equal to integral of alpha dt. Okay, so then this gives me minus natural log of u plus a constant is equal to alpha t plus a different integration constant. Okay, so then here I don't really care about u, I care about the temperature difference, a minus h. So this gives me minus ln of a minus h. We're combining these constants to get alpha t plus constant 3. Let's uh, multiply both sides by minus 1 to get rid of this minus sign. So you get natural log of a minus h is equal to minus alpha t and then minus c3, okay? Then we take the exponential of both sides, e to the ln of a minus h equals e to the minus alpha t minus c3. All right, and then we are almost done. This gives us absolute value of a minus h is equal to a new constant e to the minus alpha t, okay? And so at this point, um, I think we're kind of stuck, right? Because we don't know whether absolute value of a minus h, right? We don't know whether h is bigger than a or the other way around, okay? That's going to depend on which side we start with, right? If we start with a hotter temperature, then a minus h will be negative, right? Because h will be bigger than a. If we start with a cooler temperature, then it will be positive, right? So let's just leave it like this, and then we'll... Uh, need an initial condition to find the solution. Okay, so let's say we started with a colder object, right? So let's do a cooler object first, right? So let's say that alpha was 0 0.1, our cooling constant, room temperature A equals 40 degrees Celsius, and object the initial object temperature is h of 0 equals um, 10 degrees. Okay, so it's colder. So then let's let's plug this in here, right? So this is a minus h t, right? a is a constant, h varies over time, is equal to c e to the minus alpha t. We want to get a function h of t, right? So we're solving for this constant here. So we're going to plug in the initial condition here. Okay, so this is where it's a little bit different than the previous problems, where uh, we don't already have h of t, but we have a formula with h of t in it that we can stick our initial condition in and then kind of solve. So let's try that. So if we plug in 0, h of 0 goes here, is equal to c e to the 0. Okay? Right, no matter what alpha is, c minus alpha t becomes c e to the zero. Okay, so then let's plug in our values, 40 and 10. So this gives me 40 minus 10 is equal to c. All right, so then this tells me that c is equal to 30 degrees. Or, or yeah, c is 30, All right? The initial temperature difference, All right? And that kind of, makes sense intuitively, right? Because this is almost like the population growth problem where the population growth was proportional to the population level. Here, the change in temperature is proportional to the temperature difference. So in the population problems, the constant in integration, you know, the constant at the very end of the day is like the initial population. Here, it's the initial temperature difference because that's kind of the equivalent system, right? So then if I, uh, were to write this out. So then my solution for this problem with the initial temperature being 10 degrees Celsius is H of T, right, is equal, uh, sorry, we can pull this out now, right? So we have A minus H of T is equal to 30 E to the minus alpha, which is now, or let's just do alpha T. We won't even plug in alpha until the very end, All right? So now we know that we are starting colder, so this is always going to be positive, right? Is always less than a because we started less than a, right? So we're only going to be uh, less than a or equal to a. We're not going to overshoot it, okay? So then this just becomes, uh, this will always be positive, right? If h is less than a, so this just becomes h 
sorry, a minus h of t equals 30 e to the minus alpha t. So then h of t becomes a minus 30 e to the minus alpha t. Okay, which makes sense, right? It's an exponential decay to, instead of zero now, it's to this equilibrium temperature, right? So this is 40 minus 30 e to the minus 0 0.1 t, right? By plugging in those, right? So this says exponential decay to room temperature, right? A equals 40 degrees Celsius. Right, because uh, this will go to zero as time goes up, and so you'll just be left with 40, okay? Um, I guess it's not decay because we're starting bigger, or we're starting less than that, so this is actually growth, right? Because it's a minus of this thing that's getting smaller, so we're subtracting less and less from 40 each time. Sorry about that, yeah. So this is exponential growth to room temperature. Okay, so then the other uh, initial condition would be a hotter initial temp, right? So let's do the same, alpha equals 0 0.1, A will still be 40, but now our initial temperature, H at 0, will be, um, let's say, 60 degrees. Okay, so then if we look back to kind of this second to last step here, right, this one here, A minus H equals C e to the minus alpha t, right? That's where we'll start here, because that was right before we plugged in the initial condition. Right, so we have a minus h of t equals c e to the minus alpha t. Right, we're solving for this integration constant, and then we're going to manipulate the equation to get a formula for h of t. Okay, so we plug in 0. We get h at time 0 is equal to c e to the 0, right? So we plug in our numbers now, we get 40 minus 60 is equal to C. So this is absolute value of minus 20 equals C. So C is 20, right? Which is still the initial temperature difference, right? But when we're starting with a hotter initial temperature, we're only going to go down to exactly the right temperature, right? Exactly the equilibrium temperature. We're never going to kind of go past it to a colder temperature, right? We're always hotter or the equilibrium temperature, right? So H of T in this case is always greater than or equal to A, right? As opposed to uh, in the previous one where it was always smaller. Here it's always bigger. So then this A minus H of T in absolute values right, is equal to 20 E to the minus alpha T, right? This will always be a negative number inside there. So the absolute value is always minus that, right? or h of t minus a, right? Because h of t is always bigger, this absolute value sign means, let's do the minus of it, right? Let me maybe write that out more clearly, right? This is always minus a to the minus h of t because h of t is always bigger than a. So then this, if we distribute the minus sign that gives us h of t minus a is equal to 20 e to the minus alpha t, okay? So then that gives me h of t is equal to a plus 20e to the minus alpha t, right? So we start higher than temperature a, but then the amount that, you know, the temperature difference is going to decay to zero, right? So this says h of t is 40 plus 20e to the minus 0.1t, right? So this one is exponential decay to room temperature. A equals 40, right? So when we start on either side of our equilibrium temperature, we're either going to grow exponentially to it or decay exponentially to it, right? Or you can think of it's actually the temperature difference that is exponentially decaying to zero, right? So maybe that's the better way to think about this, right? Because that's kind of what we see um, in this problem, right? It's not really exponential growth, but it's really this temperature difference from equilibrium is decaying to zero. Okay, cool. And so, you know, a lot of these autonomous differential equations, they have to be, you know, either linear or, or sufficiently simple to be able to solve uh, with the separation of variables method. 
Um, a lot of these autonomous differential equations just can't be solved by hand at all. They can't be integrated, and we have to rely on these numerical methods. But there's a few uh, cases where you can compute it directly, right? And so that's kind of where we focused here, right? If you wanted to learn how to solve more complicated differential equations, you'd have to take a differential equations course, okay? But this is just kind of an intro, and just to kind of get you to realize that, hey, like, this system here, which is just an autonomous differential equation, which up to this point, we haven't really even seen explicit formulas for, you can get explicit formulas for the original variables as a function of time in certain special cases where they're simple enough that you can integrate. Okay, so we'll stop here.